Okay, so in trying to address the biggest stack on my desk, <clears throat> so I can clear it up so I can have space to write, to plan, to do art, we're tackling the end of quarter, I'm sorry, the fourth quarter 2021 book haul. This might be more accurate to say it's the December book haul. Um, but a couple of these I did get earlier. So we're just going to say it's the last quarter, the last three months of 2021, all the books. There's one planner and one blank journal, but for the rest, it's solid books, a lot of reading in my future. And, and this isn't even my reading list. None of these are in my reading list right now. So I'll start with a gift. This blank journal was actually a gift from a friend. She went with her family, her husband and her child, to visit Gettysburg. And while she was in Gettysburg, she got me this very nice um, journal uh, to work. I'm not sure what... I, I definitely want to have this dedicated to one subject. Um, I actually... So... <laughs> You'd think I'd, I'd have plenty of these, but I don't because I have a, a bunch of like notepads and let me see if I can show you <clears throat> little, little journals like this that are really cheap things. Right. And, and I always tell myself, oh, I'll get one of these nice leather ones when I've used all those other ones up. But the problem is I keep getting more of those little ones, so I never use them all up. So I never like. I never get a chance to like buy one of these. So I think what I'm going to do, I've been working on some um, gallery of magic um, on their, their sort of angel magic and uh, some of the other stuff that they work on. And um, so I think what I'm going to do is through my experiences working with what the gallery of magic has been doing, sort of take the best, right? Um, the stuff that I've, I find that has worked and write notes and information in here and, um, <clears throat> maybe sort it according to like, you know, magic for health, magic for finances, magic, for, you know, there's five signatures in here and it would be very easy. <coughs> <coughs> it would be very easy to have like five subsections. And that's sort of what I'm thinking right now. We'll see. Um, yeah, so thank you to my good friend who got this for me. I'm very excited to start using it. Yay! Next is this came in just today. This is the 28th day of December, 2021. So this is the last book. And this usually is something like 50 bucks on Amazon, but they have a periodic sale where it's really marked down. Um, as you can see, it is perfect bound. It's, it's glued in a hard cover. Um, and so it is a, a print on demand. This is, this is a book that I know I'm not ready for. I'm going to be straight with you. This looks like it's a much higher level book, but one, it was a great deal. It was a bargain, ah, but also I, I know eventually I'm going to be ready for it. It's been, ah, oh, what? 17, 20 years since I last was really diving into uh, Kabbalah. Because, I mean, it's been, well, about a year ago, a year ago, a year and a half ago is when I started diving back into magic after my time off. And before that, it had been 15, 20 years. Um, so it's been a while. I need to refresh a lot. I need to really read up on some other subjects and 
ponder a lot of other subjects, but I know eventually this is absolutely subject matter that um, I have interest in. Uh, so it's definitely something I will want to be taking a look at. I don't know if the sale on Amazon is still ongoing, if you're interested. If you, if you find this and it's not on sale, I would recommend just sort of you know, bookmarking it, putting it on a wish list, and then checking back in periodically um, because they will really, uh, apparently the, the markdown happens periodically. So anyways, I, I can't wait to be far enough along that I can uh, dive into this with confidence. But in the meantime, it'll look really nice on the shelves, won't it? <clears throat> now, this is one I did an unboxing for. This is my tarot journal, my daily tarot journal pull. This is the Magic of Eye Planner. Um, absolutely check them out. Highly recommend it. Great astrological information, monthly and yearly they really go into a lot of uh, insights. It's They have enough information, so if you don't know anything about astrology, <coughs> you can, um, you know, start with the guidance that they have. Um, and otherwise, like, I really liked, I really liked it last year. And um, I forgot to show in the unboxing, but there is a pocket in the back. So I will be using this for my daily tarot. Um, but if you need a planner, it is a good planner. It has a monthly spread for every month and then a two page for a week spread. So very, very nice. Very excited about this and was again, very happy with the, tw with the one I got in 2021, which is why I'm coming back. All right. Now, the next two were from the Witches Box. So this is Earth Magic by Dodie Graham McKay. There, author. And this is the fourth of a series from Llewellyn Press. Press? Llewellyn Books, sorry. Um, going into elemental magic and how the elements are used <coughs> in magic um, and, and how magic is found through the, the elements. So this is the fourth one. The witch's box was where each book, there was a, a box themed around like, so there was a fire magic uh, book was the box was themed around fire magic. Earth magic was December, 2021. So this came in that. Um, I don't know. I haven't uh, looked through it yet. Most of the, the, the other three books I'm keeping on my shelves more as reference. Um, usually I'll, I'll just sort of scan them uh, to see what's in there. But then they do make a nice, a nice reference, especially if they're a great starting place, right? Um, uh, a great way of, if you want to learn a bit about something. Um, here is the, so, so here's our, our table of co contents. So it, it'll you like most of them, it starts with your history, your folklore and your myth, right? So that's giving you the introduction to <coughs> where everything is coming from. And then it goes into working with the element. Um, and then gives, uh, usually some, some spells and rituals uh, to work with. So it's a very good, like, beginning. Like, here's the beginning of, to get you into the history, to give you an introduction to working with, right? Um, some good references. And then a few things to get you started um, on working with that element. So really good for reference for a beginning point for looking into something. So that's this one. And then the October box. October, yeah, was the box was entirely themed around the Morrigan. 
And this actually came with the Murder of Crows Tarot, which is... I don't even know how to describe it. I, I loved it. It's creepy, but it's in a delightful, creepy way. Um, very monochromatic. Um, but it came with this nice little Pagan Portals um, little book about the Morrigan. And this one might end up in my reading lists just for the information. I've heard good things... <coughs> <coughs> I've heard good things about the Pagan Portals um, series, and I currently, I don't have an especial calling to work with the Morrigan, but I think, considering my ancestry, it would be good uh, to, to read up on this just to have just to have the reference and the knowledge, right? Um, very fascinating um, trio of goddesses, really. Um, so, depending on how you... Well, that's then when we get into what is one, what is three. Um, interesting things that aren't exclusive to Trinitarian Christianity which not a lot of people realize. But anyways, this might be in this might be added to my reading list uh once I burn through enough of enough of what's already there. So this next book this next book was a Christmas gift and my mom actually let me zoom out a bit. Uh so you can see my mom actually got copies of this for everyone in the family. I guess she really enjoyed it. Uh, she had read some good book reviews on it. And it is about um, Justice John Marshall Harlan. And I actually don't know of a lot about this guy. But his name is The Great Dissenter. And as a dyed in the wool heretic... Um, and, and someone who just disagrees with just about everybody, I'm already in love with him. Um, apparently, he has a lot to do with uh, this, you know, civil rights and a lot of the um, decisions that came out of the Supreme Court in support of civil rights. So this is definitely going into my reading list. Um, once I've got my current stack about halfway done, by the way, this over here that you're seeing, that is the, actually, let me move that. This is the current, this is the current to read stack. So once I've got this about half the size that it currently is, this is going to go in there somewhere. Um, but I don't want to make this any bigger than it is until I've, you know, halved its size. So, um, Anyways, really looking forward to this. Um, so next up is a trio of books I got off eBay. Let me, oopsies, my bad. Um, someone was doing a sort of liquidation of their library. And so they had a, a nice selection of books up on eBay. And um, on the Foolish Fish Discord... Uh, well, someone ran across it and then they told us and I went on and I found three books that I was interested in. So this is a book I swear I had once upon a time. Um, but I don't know what happened to it, but it is, <coughs> and this is, there is a, um, 17th century manuscript called the trees on angel magic. And so what this is, is um, sort of a, you know, modern day translation, commentary, all of that. I can't wait to get into this sort of angel magic, angel magic and alchemy are sort of, and a bit of like super primitive witchcraft are sort of like where I live in terms of esoteric practice. Um, 
So I am very excited to read this. I swear I had a copy of this before. Um, but if, if I did, it'll be very interesting as to how my understanding has changed because 20 years is, that's a lot of growth for a person. Um, <clears throat> so I, yeah, I'm in angel magic, all of that. I am interested to get into this. So eventually it will be on the reading list. As I said, <clears throat> alchemy uh, is one of the places where I have sort of lived in terms of esoteric practice. And um, this is, I, I really don't know anything about this book. I just saw the name and was very interested. Uh, alchemic art is delightfully weird. <coughs> um but uh, there, there's so much, there's so much symbolism that uh, involved in it that, of course, you know, just going from an exoteric point of view, it's going to be weird. Um, but from the esoteric alchemical point of view, you can look at these images and they make, you, you understand what they're expressing and so they make sense. And so looking at looking at this from the perspective of mandalas, which are always highly uh, symbolic and ritualized, I think, will be, will be an interesting read. And then, finally, um, I'm always interested in uh, Native American stories, Native American uh, folklore, uh, legend, and myth. Uh, because I live here in North America, therefore... I ought to know something about the people who were, who were here, you know, before I showed up, right? Not, not just my ancestors, but <coughs> all the peoples who lived on this land and um, the stories that they tell, because I think there's so much, there's so much that is lost and there's so much that I find interesting where all these stories overlap and then you realize that they're telling the same story as all these legends and myths from across the world, uh, just in a dif different way, or from sometimes a literal different geographic perspective. So again, I have no idea what's in this, but I'm very interested in it. Um, so this is um, a classic Native American creation story as retold by a Seneca elder, Twyla Nietzsche. I'm sorry, and her granddaughter, Jamie Sams. So really interested in that. So we're about almost halfway through. Um, <clears throat> these next two I got at my local esoteric shop. Um, and so <coughs> a friend and I, we have a weekly Bible study and it's not just Bible study. We, we Bible studies a small part of what we do. And then we just start talking philosophy and conspiracies and, um, bitching about our families, you know, everything you do with, with a best friend. And one of the things we, we were talking about how very sketchy Paul is. Paul being the, the guy who wrote a bunch of letters that are included in the New Testament of the Bible and how weirdly influential he is on early Christian theology and how we were really coming to think that that was wildly inappropriate, not due to anything, any agreement or disagreement with anything he said, but just based on who he claimed to be, who, <coughs> who history has him being. And we thought, <coughs> excuse me, we thought it was really freaking weird how influential he was. And then we started thinking, well, what would it look like if we didn't have such a strong influence of Paul? And therefore, uh, we, we actually drew a real connection between the influence of Paul and the influence of Rome, which is really something that's coming from two people who were well, she was raised and I spent a brief time 
being super conservative Catholic. Um, and one of the things we were talking about was, well, a lot of the European traditions uh, would have remained <coughs> they, a, a lot more of the, the old uh, ways would have been kept um, as opposed to the Romanization of everything. And in pondering what would sort of an English speaking Christianity look like if it was depaulized, right? Um, if the Roman influence was turned down. And our thought was, well, it might look more like the Arthurian legends, the Arthurian tradition. So when I was in um, the, at our local esoteric shop, which is the Crystal Fox, which is amazing um, up in Laurel, uh, Laurel, Maryland, I found, well, I first found this book, which, okay, first of all, it's thick, right? And you know how the song goes. I like big books and I cannot lie. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not how that song goes, but um, it's still true. Ha! Um, I, so first of all, I, the, the, the name Gareth Knight caught my eye because he was a student of Dion Fortune and I'm a Dion Fortune fangirl. Um, so seeing his name as the guy who wrote the foreword and then the, ever since I've looked into John and Caitlin Matthews and they're sort of in many ways um, some of the go-to people for Arthurian tradition uh, these days. So I picked this up just because I thought, well, how these are people that have already done a lot of work in the Arthurian tradition and sussing that out and piecing it back together. So let me at least look at what they've done. And then I found this with it and I picked it up because it was still the Arthurian tradition and formula, Gareth Knight and Dion Fortune. As I said, I'm a fangirl. That said, it is channeled. This is a mostly channeled work. I'm really sketch on channeled works. It's not that I don't believe they don't happen. <clears throat> In fact, I... I very much know that channeled writing happens. Um, I know that automatic writing happens. And I, I'm not the kind of person who will jump to automatically, um, oh God, it's demonic, right? Like that's that's not, that's not me. I just got a little sketch on it because to me then it's, it's, it's a little bit, um, sort of goes into the realm of unverifiable, unsubstantiated personal personal gnosis um it, it's ideas that i cannot track the provenance of you know now people like edgar casey right he did a lot of this but he also had a lot to back him up he had a real solid reputation of of um <coughs> other things he was doing with the same technique right so yeah he was he was channeling some really out there ideas, but on the other hand, with the same method, he was successfully diagnosing and, and helping doctors treat people with illness. And so for, for like Edgar Casey, I can say, yeah, those are still some pretty out there ideas. I don't know if I buy them, but he's got this. And that's sort of how I am with channeled writings. I'm like, I, I'm not going to take it and accept it as channeled, I'll, it's just anything that's channeled is a single data point, but it still has to agree with other data points. Um, and when it goes up against archaeology, right? Um, not necessarily the interpretations of archaeological finds, but if something is dug out of the ground, does the channeled, you know, does the channeled writing conflict with this and then then I have to choose you know what do I believe you know the channeled writer or my lying eyes sometimes sometimes your eyes are lying and that's something to keep in mind but a lot of times they're not so that's what these these two are um, and then I picked up one other book on that trip and it is this one this is Ozark Folk Magic Plants Prayers and Healing 
by Brandon Weston. This is going to go with the, my copy of uh, Backwoods Witchcraft, which is on Appalachian uh, folk magic. Folk magic. I try and take it a slightly better angle. Um, yeah. Um, and anyways, I have another book on the um, sort of Appalachian hoodoo and folk magic. And so I wanted to get, uh, when I saw this, I was like, oh, the Ozarks, probably similar, but probably also different. And uh, when I was talking about sort of primitive witchcraft being a place where I live, uh, a lot of that, it actually lines up with the alchemy um, and, and the other stuff that I do, because I'm very much interested in what are the actual core requirements of, of magic? What is, what makes it work when it does work? Um, and so on sort of the, the left brain, left brain is all about the, um, you know, looking at alchemy, looking at, uh, Kabbalah, looking at those, all of those systems of, of ritual and ceremonial magic. And then my right brain uh, is very much into the sort of witchcraft and folk traditions um, because I think sometimes the ceremony and ceremonial and ritual stuff gets a little um, dogmatic sometimes. Oh, it has to be this certain way. Oh, it has to be this other way. And then you have, you know, some old granny out, out in a hut somewhere who's, who's able to do something and, and she has no education. She can't read or write. Um, but she knows she's got to take care of her village. She knows she's got to take care of her family. Um, so I, I like going from sort of both ends, both extremes, so this is going to be something um, definitely happy to add to my bookshelves, happy to sort of go through and um, get a, a better understanding of uh, magic really at the most grounded level. Um, yeah. All right. Um, sorry. Having, uh, I always have te technical issues difficulties. This, <laughs> I had no idea this was even coming out until he announced it. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Owen Cyclops. He is, used to be a bit of an esotericist. He is very much more now, um, Orthodox, Catholicish, Christian. Uh, but he still has the mind for symbolism. If you go and look at his, the artwork he sells as individual pieces, um, you'll definitely see that influence. Um, but this is a collection of comics that he does where you can see it's not, he's not investing a lot, lot, lot of effort. Um, but I think that any, anyone, <laughs> anyone who is interested in ideas, um, who plays around with ideas and philosophy and conspiracy theory, you, you, you're going to love these. And I love, look at this. Um, this book may not under any circumstances be used for any form of divination up to and including bibliomancy or libero haruspici. If burned, the ashes of this book may not be inspected for any meaningful patterns or signs from entities. Ownership of this book confers a lifetime responsibility by, of the owner to properly steward all physical and non-physical aspects of creation with respect to general basic theological virtues. Um, come on, come on. That's, that's sort of... Uh, what he's, 
what he's playing around with. Um, so I don't want to, you know, show too much because this is his work. I would say check him out. <coughs> you can find him on Instagram and Gab. And I think, I think he's still on Twitter, but Owen Cyclops. Um, and then if you like what you see, uh, check out his website. Uh, for his art, highly recommend. And then, yeah, again, if you like all of that, go ahead and I would, gosh, recommend this book. This is going to be a sort of, um, not something I read straight through, but something I'm going to go to when I need a break, um, which I've got a lot of heavy reading coming up. I'm going to need breaks. All right. So this one I did an unboxing for. This is Celestial Intelligence is by, uh, was it Greg Kaminsky? Um, published by Anathema Publishing. So definitely check them out. Um, yeah, Gregory Kaminsky. I was, I was so happy to get a, a collector's edition of this. Um, this book is about Giovanni Picadella Mirandola um, and what he did to bring... Uh, really <clears throat> um, Kabbalistic ideas and concepts into the Western esoteric tradition. Um, here's the full title. Celestial Intelligences, Angelology, Kabbalah, and Gnosis, Giovanni Pico della Mirandola's Quest for the Perennial Philosophy by Greg Kaminsky. Um, very excited to put this one into my reading list. And then, I mean, this one also has like great artwork. Um, put it into the reading list and then, and then read it. But, uh, because, uh, you know, clearly it's subject matter I'm interested in, but in the meantime, it's just going to look fabulous on my shelves. This is such a lovely, lovely book. You can see it is sewn, but there's also a uh, glue. Um, actually, let me, Yeah, I was just double checking that it wasn't just signatures pressed into glue, but yes, there was thread there, um, which I would expect. Um, Anathema is one of the the publishers just putting forward beautiful books, so they are absolutely um, they're putting the the quality in. Um, as I mean, as you can tell. Um, you don't go to this much effort on the cover for something that's just perfect bound. Um, so, yeah, this is just... Uh, it's so pretty. <laughs> the final... This is actually a set. This is books one, four, and five of David Heim Smith's Lightning Flash of Aleph. Of Aleph. A L E F series. Um, he is an artist, primarily. Well, and an and an Kabbalist and esotericist. Um, I ordered all three of these books. Two and three are not currently in print. So I got the the three that are currently in print, and he sent uh with with them. I mean, uh, also talk about really lovely binding. Um, he sent with them um, some lovely uh, prints of his artwork. I just... I don't know if I want to get some little frames or some, you know, some, or do something where it's like a mat with multiple cutouts. Um, and then you know, have one in each cutout in the mat and then have the whole thing framed. My first job was doing framing, um, for art. Um, thus my, um, my thinking on that. So this is Kabbalah for understanding, alchemy for practice, gnosis for truth. 
Oh, love that. And so he has done just fantastic artwork. But then he's got like, these aren't art books. These are books with his art. Um, and he's talking about the the philosophy and the understanding and, and you know, Kabbalah. And um, again, I don't want to show too much of this because this is his work. Um, and I, I don't want to impinge. I'll just pull this. Um, so this is book one. The Deep Principles of Kabbalistic Alchemy. He's also got some videos uh, on the subject matter, and I know he's done some classes, so absolutely check out his website um, for more information if you're interested. This is the Fountain of Wisdom, and there's a note about an error, so I'm keeping that in here. Um, this is volume four. Um And what this is, is this is actually a translation of a pre-existing text, um, as, as you can see, where uh, Mr. Smith was doing the, the images and the commentary, and uh, Mr. Verman did the Verman, please, I don't want that to sound wrong, um, did the actual translation of the book. Um so, yeah, okay, okay, another gorgeous, and then book five, which was more recently released, The Quintessence of Secret Mercury, um, I mean, just look, look at how absolutely lovely, this is, this is volume five. Um, with practices, prayers, and parables. And so just some more of his amazing, gorgeous artwork. Um, I, again, don't want to show too much. Oh, this one unfolds. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know that. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, some of the artwork even unfolds. So these three go together and I'm probably going to dig into these, I don't know, eventually, <laughs> definitely before the, um, the other Kabbalistic book, the primeval evil, primeval evil in Kabbalah is definitely going to be after these, um, I am I am hoping that he get reprints uh, issues a new print of uh, books two and three so that it is um, at least so you know the I have the complete uh, five um, but I don't I don't know do check him out as I said as as you can see his just really really amazing artwork. Um, so that is, uh, so this is a really, you know, massive stack of books. Um, but I'm very excited, very happy to add these to my shelves and to add them to my reading stack. Uh, once I've gotten through the reading stack uh, sufficiently that I can add new things to it. So that, um, ooh, that is the... Final quarter 2021 book haul. Um, there's one more book that I did order in this time. And it has not even shipped yet. Um, I ordered, along with two other books that I will not name because they are gifts. I ordered The Cloud of Unknowing from Black Letter Press. But one of the other books... <coughs> But one of the other books in that order 
was a sort of pre-sale, pre-print. And because they ship from Germany, I think that they are waiting for that one book to actually be released. And then they're going to send all three of them at the same time, uh, which, you know, makes a lot of sense because that's shipping and customs and who the hell wants to pay that twice. Um, I absolutely agree with that decision of theirs. So two friends, you're going to get your Christmas gifts late. Um, and then when that book comes in, I'll just include it in the book haul for whenever I do that <laughs> book haul. Um, so yeah, this is, Ooh, I got a lot of reading ahead of me. So let's get to it, huh?